My guest today is Shane Jones. Shane, how are you? Doing great. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming. Um, tell me, what do you do? So I work at Microsoft in our commercial software engineering team. Uh, so I help our largest retail customers accelerate their digital transformation. That's, that's what I do during the day. Excellent. I heard that you have built a cool app for uh, vision impaired folks. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, you bet. So I, I'm a, a part of a large community of folks that have worked on an app called Vocal Screen. So the origins of this app um, date back, um, gosh, more, I think more than two years now. It's been a, a one week project that uh, different crews have worked on and, and different people have volunteered to, to help um, bring about. And it was uh, inspired by the, the original creator of the app was uh, a gentleman named Hassan, who's a, f a former colleague of, of mine. And he came up with this idea because it, Hassan is, is blind um, from birth and, and one of the software engineers that, that we, we work with and work with frequently. And the challenge uh, that that he faced and many others faced is when content's being shared through Teams and and live you know um, web conferences, web meetings. Uh, that content's often not very accessible um, at all to the recipients of, of that. It's shared as a video stream, and it loses all the context of the document. And screen readers uh, and narrators have a difficult time. Um, reading that content real time. And so the idea behind Vocal Screen was to uh, keep the structure of that content intact and stream that to the recipients uh, on these calls, people in these meetings, so that their screen readers could read it and, um, and they could be more, um, you know, participate in the meeting in a, more fully. And that was the original idea. And, and it's been iterated over for a couple of years, as I, as I mentioned, and I, I've been working on it a little bit here lately. Tell me where it stands now. Is it a, is it a standalone app? Is it a plugin? What, what is it? Yeah, so we, we've uh, gone quite a few different directions um, with it. So the original version of the app was a, a you know Windows desktop application that leveraged a lot of the Windows APIs to sort of um, uh, iterate over the content that's that's on a screen, and and then it's shared out to folks via a web application. So there's a presenter version of it and a and kind of a viewer um, or listener in this case version uh, of this. Um, and, and there there were some challenges we ran into that. Uh, of course, whenever you're trying to um, bring assistive technologies more broadly into the workforce, uh, the, the, the installation and the friction around using those technologies has to be really low for people that don't use them very often. So uh, for presenters, um, you, you never know when that technology might be needed or wanted by someone that you're meeting with. And so you really need to get up and running in seconds, or you can't really delay a meeting for five, 10 minutes while you install software. Um, so what this latest iteration we decided to do is um, add really simple plugins into the key content sources that are being shared. Um, you know, the web browser is is a dominant one for things that, that we do. You know, with with uh, Azure DevOps and all the tools we use every day to share our backlogs, do our standups. So we created a um, Edge and Chrome browser extension that um, uh, that basically takes the content from the the screen, and when it's being shared in a meeting, it uh, broadcasts that to. The, the listeners. So it's a simple browser extension on both sides, um, both for the um, you know the the presenter and the and the listener. And the idea would be to add plugins to Office um, and eventually to Teams and make it a core, hopefully a core feature inside a Teams someday. So so right now what it does is it examines a uh, the HTML in a web page. It pulls out the text inside of that HTML and then speaks. It does some sort of text to speech or how does that work? Yeah, pretty close. So what it doesn't um, uh, take the text out of the HTML page. It actually takes the the entirety of the HTML um, DOM, all the elements uh, within that page. And the reason it does that is because uh, within an HTML page, for example, that structure is super important to the narration uh, by a screen reader. So if you take just the text out, um, you lose all the context, and your screen reader has a difficult time understanding the navigation, understanding um, the association of elements on the page. So we take the as native a source as we can of HTML, including some of the assistive technologies like um, um, the ARIA labeling in it, and even the the you know H1, H2 what headers. Is, what is the ARIA label? 
ARIA labels are an extension of, of HTML elements that, that help screen readers better understand the content on a page. Um, so in some ways, you, you know, you, you might have, let's say you have, um, to, you know, people are probably familiar with like alt text for images where it'll help describe what an image might be. Um, that, give, that gives you the ability to, to give sort of a description of, of what's on the page, but it doesn't always give you the context uh, of that. There might be an association between, you know, two images as an example, like one might be a chart and one might be a, a label to that chart. Um, and in other cases, and, and actually in a really cool way, we worked on a project um, recently with Starbucks where we're doing some uh, accessibility uh, features and in ARIA labeling there we were able to provide an audio um, notification that was representative of something that had an on-screen visual representation for, for others. So in this case like a, a menu um, that expanded that gave them options or settings uh, it's, it, you know that menu is really easy to see if it's animated you know, visually but if you're trying to rely on screen readers, you don't know that that suddenly appeared. So we can actually use things like ARIA labels to do uh, additional um, audio notifications to say uh, the settings menu has opened. You know, and so it takes it beyond just reading your screen and actually gives a separate user experience and an enhanced user experience for people that are using screen readers as their primary way to interface with it. So that it's a super valuable um, context. And if you lose that, you lose a lot of the the um, um, ability to, to to uh, really listen to that content in a, in a structured way. Interesting. I'm learning something already. Yeah, yeah. They're very, they're very great technologies. Our labels are super interesting. You mentioned there's a presenter version and a viewer version. Are both of them required for this to work? Yeah. So the presenter um, version is really, uh, you know, the plugins that go to the content source itself, and those are required to to stream um, to out the content. Uh, on the listener side of it, you actually don't need um, a, a plugin. We do have an extension that can add some additional features um, that, that I can share a little bit about. But um, the because the content is sort of preserved and structured in a way that uses you know standard HTML um, outputs, you can just use a web browser natively on the listener side. Um, so the presenter that would start this session, start the sharing session, would get a unique link that they could then put in the chat window and share with all the participants. And you just pop open your web browser, and for that session in time, you'd be able to stream the content through um, through your browser without any additional software. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Is this available publicly right now? It's not available publicly yet, so it's an internal Microsoft project. Um, it, it's one of the things in CSE we call a hack overflow project or hack for good. Um, so crews work on that. Um, it could be something that, that gets open sourced uh, eventually, but our vision also is to try to get these technologies um, built more into the tools that people are using for meetings. So Teams is a, is a great example. We'd love to get these kinds of features put into Teams, and the Teams uh, engineering product group is working on accessibility features all the time. So we're kind of experimenting with, with ideas and then we hope to get those back into the product groups to see if these features make sense for the for the core products. Um, but you never know, we may, we may become an open source uh, technology at some point as well, but it's not today. I would encourage that. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, you mentioned that the, your, your kind of your on your roadmap is to add something to teams that will do this. Uh, what other features are on the roadmap of this? Yeah, so the, the first thing uh, that, that we'd love to extend is uh, more content sources. So we have the web browser plugin today, and we need to, to you know make that work even better. Um, but we then just kind of want to go down the list of the most commonly shared content. So PowerPoint is obviously the you know maybe the most shared content even above web browsers. So we'd want to put a, um, an Office extension that allows uh, someone to go into directly into an Office application or even Office Online and share that content out um, through this. Um, the other thing we want to do is it, you know, it's, it's super important that we try to capture as much of the content as possible. So if it is something structured like a web browser or HTML or an Office application, we really kind of know how to deal with that. But if it's less structured, um, you know, we want to use OCR in the cloud to take that image, extract as much of the text uh, as we can, and provide that um, you know, through this. And we want to take that even a step further. So not just you know extract the text and, and put that as a, you know, a string that gets sent out as, as sort of a blob that you have to read through, but we want to use some of the things about that text, like the size of the text um, or the location on the page to create our own context. So we have a, an idea where we create these RA labels using machine learning 
based on what we're seeing on there. So not just text extraction, but actually context and structure using cloud services. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, I actually had a recent conversation with, um, I forgot the gentleman's name, but uh, uh, have you ever seen the video from about four years ago of the, the blind fellow in England reading the menu with his yeah. phone? And it's doing a little bit of that as well through a phone application. It was just fascinating. Yeah, that's a, that's a super uh, uh, popular application, and, and, and that demo is, a, is amazing, and, and the passion behind that is is, is awesome. Um, but that technology is being used today by lots of folks. That's not, it, it, I mean, you watch that video, and it looks like science fiction, but it's the reality for for a lot of folks today, um, and makes makes their experience on a daily basis so much better. That's what I love. I used to show that. I used to do a lot of talks on cognitive services, and I would show that video just to show the power of how a technology like that can transform someone's life it yeah it's, it really is it really is amazing and uh and we're just in the early innings of of all of this technology you know there there are um so many disabilities uh and and the range of human experience is so broad in this world uh there, there's amazing things that we can do with technology um to, to make people's lives better safer um you know enrich enrich so that's that's a really great example of a technology that that's made a big difference yeah now, for your project, um, are you um, is there is the the code is not available online yet? But are you talking about it publicly? Are you sharing anything about it with the world at large? So uh, currently, we're not not sharing much externally uh, on it, and that's mostly just from a, a time perspective. And it's Sorry. it's a side project. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you know, there's no reason uh, it's not proprietary in, in terms of the idea or the context. This is something that we're hoping to add into the community. So if folks are interested, um, they can just reach out to me directly and I'd, I'd be happy to talk about it or share ideas. And like I said, maybe someday we might open source it or find a way to, to broaden uh, the set of folks that can work on this. What's the best way to reach out to you? So I, I would say the best way to reach out to me is probably um, you know, LinkedIn, uh, Shane, just search for Shane Jones at Microsoft, you'll, you'll find me there and that's a really good sort of way uh, to, to get involved um, you know, sort of professionally. I'm on GitHub, uh, Shane D. Jones, and you, know, you can kind of uh, collaborate there from an open source perspective. Um, and uh, like I said, last but not, not, not least, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Shane D. Jones uh, as well, though I'm not quite as active there as, uh, as elsewhere. Uh -huh. You're smart to put that middle initial with a common name like Shane Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the only way I can uh, differentiate myself. Now, where do you uh, where do you learn about technologies that help with accessibility? Yeah, so uh, you know, I, I mean, Microsoft is an amazing place to, to work in terms of accessibility. Um, you know, obviously, I'm a little bit biased since I've, I've been there for for a while, but we really do have an a, a, a amazing community of passionate folks that are um, driving this forward. I mean, my journey started um, actually with a lunch with uh, Jenny Le Fleury, who is our chief accessibility officer at Microsoft. I had bid on a lunch at, at our annual uh, um, give campaign and got to spend a lunch with, with uh, uh, Jenny and about four or five other folks and really learned about how technology is impacting uh, everyone's lives and, and f from a accessibility perspective and the difference that it makes. And that that lit a little bit of a fire in me. And, and from there, um, just reaching out in, internally and finding folks that, that have an interest. One of the things that I've learned about, um, you know, folks, especially uh, in the community and the, of people that have disabilities is how creative and energetic that uh, everyone is about solving problems. And they are some of the best problem solvers we have on this planet. So the more you can get involved in that community, just I think the more ide ideation that comes out of it. And of course, um, being at Microsoft, we can find all the technical pieces we need to, to bring, you know, to, to bear to try to bring these things to life. Very cool. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? No, I mean, I, I think it's, uh, I would just encourage anyone who is curious about accessibility um, to think of it as broadly as possible, get it, get involved. Um, it really is an empowering and interesting uh, area, both from a human perspective and, and if you're just purely a technologist and that's what you're interested in, this is a great area to explore cutting edge technology. So get involved and, and check it out. And like I said, reach out if you have ideas, um, lo love to hear from you. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Shane. I've, I've gained knowledge and inspiration from you from those last few minutes. Yeah, absolutely, David. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the time.
I love working on accessibility projects in the technology industry. The community of people that have a passion for developing accessible technologies uh, is amazing, and I've made some of my best friends um, and, and co-workers in that space. So get involved in accessibility if you're at all interested.